Welcome back. We're looking at the new agreement normalizing ties between Turkey and Armenia and discussing what this could mean for the future of the region. Joining us today from Paris is Armin Sarkisian, a former Prime Minister of Armenia and founding president of Eurasia House in London. And from Ankara, we're joined by Ibrahim Kalin, an assistant professor at Georgetown University in Washington and also a chief advisor to the Turkish Prime Minister. Let's go straight to the phones in this part of the program. Um, Greg Sarkisian, not sure whether you have any relation to the Prime Minister, calling us from Toronto. Go ahead. Hello, good afternoon, and uh, thank you for taking the, uh, this call. Uh, I have a question to the, uh, to the speakers. Turkey had two reasons to, uh, to close the borders with uh, Armenia. One was the Armenian government's efforts to affirm Armenian genocide. The second one is uh, the problem of Garapah, nagorno Karabakh. If Turkey wants to have a good neighborly relationship with Armenia, why do they have to speak on behalf of Azerbaijan when, uh, and not have a direct talks between Turkey and Armenia and have a relationship established similar to what Egypt did with Israel despite Israel's problems with Syria and other neighboring countries? Okay, let's ask Professor Cullen. Well, I mean, it, it's a good question to which we have answered affirmatively. Uh, if you look at, uh, you know, the recent history, Turkey was one of the first countries to recognize Armenia and when, it came, when it became independent in 1991. Uh, secondly, you know, when the Armenian uh, Turkish writer, Hrant Dink, journalist Hrant Dink was assassinated, the entire country stood behind him and everybody in Turkey said, we are all Hrant Dink, we are all Armenians. And last year, our prime, uh, President Abdullah Gül visited Armenia with, without any preconditions uh, on the invitation of uh, his counterpart. And now his counterpart, that is uh, uh, the Armenian president, is coming to Turkey in about two or three days, I believe, for, a, for, a, for another soccer game. Now, so you see this, uh, this opening. This is already happening. And this is the good side. As I said, this is the beginning. Uh, of a new bright phase in the Turkish-Armenian relations, but we have to give it some time. Emotions will obviously play an important role uh, in this history, but I think it's important to realize that you know, for the, for the benefit of the Armenians living in Armenia and for the Turks, uh, everybody, regardless of their political position or historical understanding, should support this process. It will benefit both sides. If some uh, you know, elements within the Armenian community or the Turkish community are stuck in the past, and you know, keep bringing these issues again and again on the table and build uh, a relationship on oppositional identities, we will get nowhere, obviously. It will be in the benefit of Armenia economically, politically, etc., to have good relations with Turkey. And we value having good relationship with Armenia along the same lines. Let's go to uh, Prime Minister Sarkisian. Prime Minister, many Armenians feel that there should be no normalization of relations with Turkey until Turkey acknowledges that the killing of more than one million Armenians at the end of uh, the First World War uh, is deemed a genocide. Um, that's putting a condition on this agreement. Is it likely that that kind of condition could undermine the agreement? Uh, I think it goes, uh, I would like, uh, again, I would like to basically uh, take away, uh, get away a little bit from the agreement and go back to the essence of the, uh, of the issue, to the sensitivity of it. And I would like to answer to the question that was asked for by the previous uh, uh, the, the gentleman about putting past, uh, put, uh, forgetting about the past and putting uh, past behind us and go forward, which is basically the right way of doing things. The only, the only uh, thing from the Armenian perspective is that that past is a bit asymmetric for the Turkish side and for the uh, Armenians. And I heard a professor from, uh, from Ankara telling about the Armenians of Armenia. I would like here to remind that we are speaking about a small country but a global nation. Armenians living worldwide are much bigger than those that live in Armenia. And Normalization of relations between Turkey and Armenia are considering everybody, including Armenians in Armenia, Los Angeles, Sydney, or Moscow, or in Beirut. So we have to take care of that. Second thing is that this asymmetry of the past, the Turks, they don't have the duty of memory that the Armenians of several generations, starting the, from 1915, are carrying with them worldwide the memory uh, of the duty of the memory of the genocide of 1915. So from that point of view, 
caring about the process and caring about the future of normalization of relations between two nations, it's very important that the Turkish side understands the sensitivity of this issue, that it cannot okay. be Pro handled in, Prime in Minister a just Sarkis, and very I, simple manner. I, I just want to get this question. We have a caller, Harry, calling us from Toronto. Harry, go ahead with your question. The Turkish representative, how the Turkish government would like to trust the Turkish government and uh, believe that Turkey is genuinely interested in negotiation, reconciliation with Armenians when Turkey itself it bans and penalizes its own intellectuals, journalists, writers from even discussing the Armenian genocide, using the word genocide, Armenian genocide. Haran Pink was assassinated in the streets of Istanbul. Orhan Pamuk was jailed, and now he's an, uh, under another indictment. So how do the Turks want the Armenians to trust them. They should show some kind of... Okay, okay. I'm going to have to interrupt you there and put that question. We have a minute, uh, Professor Kalin, if you could address that. Well, first of all, a correction there. Our Nobel laureate, Orhan Pamuk, was never jailed. There was a court case against him and a few other intellectuals who spoke up about the Armenian issue. But again, you have to see, if you're talking about setting preconditions, here is the Armenian precondition, that you have to recognize the events of 1915 and 16 as genocide and nothing else, unless, and then we, uh, otherwise we won't talk to you. This has been actually the main stumbling block between Turkish-Armenian relations. But uh, and, you know, the Armenian side has been very firm and almost kind of a true believer on this, that it has happened, it is proof, it's historical fact, whether you like it or not. Well, among the historians, you know, I come from a histor history background, among the historians, it's a very contested issue. I don't want to go into, into that whole debate. But what Turkey did, long before the signing of these protocols, uh, the Prime Minister sent a letter I'm to sorry, sir, I'm going to have to interrupt you there. I'm going to interrupt you there. We've run out of time. Thanks to both of you for being with us. On our of next show, we talked to New York Times columnist Roger Cohen and Iranian expert Kaveh Afrasiabi about prospects for improving relations between Washington and Tehran. Remember, you can follow the show on Facebook and see what we're up to there. Our latest video is an interview with one of our producers where she takes you behind the scenes of this show. See you next time.